it is probably a right time to stop supporting Agile Manifesto and referencing it. And in this video I will tell you why I personally don't support Agile Manifesto and I don't think anyone really should. This video turned out to be rather lengthy, so I decided to make a quick summary. My criticism is based around four simple things. Number one. Agile Manifesto was probably created by well-intentioned but probably not the most qualified people to suggest real changes for the software development processes. The idea that Agile principles or values are working for any context and for any team just don't look realistic to me. The whole Agile Manifesto is also built on false dichotomies of values where things which are not opposite each other are kind of artificially made opposite or against each other, so you don't really see how they actually support each other. Most of the Agile principles are rather vague or not informative, and they are not based on anything except opinions of some people. And what is more, some of the most popular and boldest principles are most likely to be false. So this is Agile Manifesto, this is a document most of Agile gurus referencing as the main document to read and to adhere to if you want to be Agile. And if you don't want to be Agile, then you're just a bad person. One of the first problems that I have with Agile is that Agile is not guiding principles uh, based on some evidence or anything. Those are sets of four values. And the problem with values, you either have them or not, but let's go through every value one by one and see what I can tell you about every value. So individual and interactions over processes and tools. First of all, it's a false dichotomy. Like, it's not like individual interactions are standing against processes and tools. They work with each other and they support each other. And for many people, like for example, uh, myself, who has some attention deficit issues, um, processes and tools is what helps me to function properly. I'm creating checklists for me how to go outside, how to go in. And that works, it helps me to stay focused. So for some people, without the process, there is no interaction and individual will just get lost. But okay, let's accept this for now. And then we go into working software over comprehensive documentation. And I feel that authors of the JAL manifesto, they had this fixation on the software, like software is the most important thing out there, which is bullshit. The most important thing out there is solving someone's problem, and software is just a means to this. And quite often, without the documentation, the software is blatantly useless. If we take Boeing 737 MAX catastrophe, this was partly because of the bad documentation. There was a bug in product and a bug in design, that's true. But the documentation wasn't properly updated, so people could not know about the problem. Then, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. I don't see the dichotomy here. And this is something that can be used against you, because any prudent customer, they will do the legal work carefully. And if you just concentrate on the customer collaboration and will not do your legal work, you can get yourself into troubles and you probably will get yourself into troubles one way or the other. Then going to responding to change over following a plan. I think they miss it. The fact that if you are constantly responding to change, you just might have no plan and you just don't know what you do. So when you encourage responding to change from your customer, you just help them to not have a proper plan and go to you and try to give you money while not getting a final product or not actually spending some extra time on thinking what it is that they really want and need. Another thing is that not every change is possible. You cannot change, for example, monolith architecture to microservice architecture just because you thought that it could be nice to uh, use kind of microservices now. So lots of non-functional requirements, you need to think about them beforehand. In addition to these four values, what the Agile Manifesto can give us, 12 principles of Agile software. Okay, let's have a look at them. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer. Well, sounds good. I agree with this. But now, 
through early and continuous delivery of software. And what if I, as a customer, just don't want that? I'm going to deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months, and I, am with the user, sometimes just dread it to think about update. Often updates are coming in and making my system unstable, bringing no value to me whatsoever. Build project around motivated individuals, give them environment and support. Okay, I really like it because it's so bright in the naivete, so I'm just actually excited. The people started thinking about motivation, this missionaries over mercenary stuff. What they don't realize is that the world is not so full of motivated people. We don't have enough programmers, let alone motivated programmers out there. So what people started to do, because employers wanted to see this motivation, people started to fake motivation. And when you need to choose between feeding your family and paying your mortgage and being motivated, what are you going to choose? Just write me comments. Are you going to choose motivation? Or are you going to choose providing for your family? It's just, it's not a, even a wishful thinking. It's just like fairy tales and unicorns and candies falling from trees. Then we're going to continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. We don't know what agility is. We don't know what good design is, we don't know what technical excellence is, but they are enhancing agility. If you take five different software developers and put them in one room and ask them what technical excellence is and what good design is, you will be lucky to have at least 10 different answers. Then we go into my favorite part. The best architectures, requirements and design emerge from self-organizing teams, which is not a fact and probably is actually the reality is opposite than that. But some people have this belief, okay, they believe that best architectures, requirements and design will emerge from self-organizing teams. We yet to see real self-organizing teams. For around 15 years of my work, I've seen one or probably two teams which were more or less self-organizing, but that was possible because they were working in a particular environment, in a particular system where that self-organization was possible. And one of the teams, which was actually a good self-organizing team, wasn't collocated and they couldn't have face-to-face -face conversation because they lived in different parts of the world. It is more likely, in my understanding, to come up with subpar architecture in a self-organizing team. Uh, self-organization involves a certain amount of conformism. And conformism is not helping to come up with the best possible solution. So what I was trying to say in this video, in addition to my rant and just probably going through the child manifesto, what I'm trying to say is that we probably need to move past agile, non-agile dichotomy and just try to think in terms of efficiency, fitting a context and ideally some kind of evidential based decision making. And it would be really nice to see more open discussions about agile, clean code, solid distributed development in our community of developers.